we are asked to factor trinomials. Trinomial means it has three terms. Terms are separated by a plus or minus sign. So we got one, two, three terms here. And notice it fits the x squared, uh, ax squared plus bx plus c format. Okay, so whenever you have a one in front, then we just call this normal factoring. We always have the process of having it where we know it's gonna break down, it, it's telling us to factor. So we know it does factor, we know it does break down. And we know that it has to have an X in front, okay? Cause that's a one X squared. So X times X is our one X squared in front and then it would distribute out through the rest. The question is what are the other two numbers that go here? For me, I have a shortcut. I just put a little multiply dot above the last number and a plus sign in, above the middle number. And that's a one in front of that X. So we're looking for what two numbers multiply to be negative 30, add to be positive one. This is like your old diamond problems. So they multiply to be negative 30 and they add to be one. What two numbers multiply to be negative 30, add to be one. Now, <clears throat> if you don't know and you're unsure, you have to break down all the pairs of factors that multiply to be 30. And this is called the sieve of Aristothenes, where all we do is we just go in order until we get to the, the middle number and then when everything links up. So we wanna make sure we list them all. So start with the easiest one, one times 30. It's even, so two times 15. Three goes into it, three times 10. Does four go into it? No. Does five? Yes, five times six. And then notice six links together. So these are all the factors of 30. And the way I do it is I look for any combination of these, adding or subtracting, that would make one, okay? Well, we know this is a negative 30, so one has to be positive and one has to be negative. So the logic is it does work if you subtract them to get one, but I just, in general, just look at it to see if there's any combinations that make one, adding or subtracting. Right here we go, five and six. How would that work? Well, if we it's, they add to be a positive one, they add to be a positive one, so that means the bigger one has to be positive. So that means the five is negative. Those are the two numbers that go in here, and it doesn't matter their order, so I'll go ahead and just put the negative five here, <clears throat> and here's the positive six. We have to have that plus or minus sign right there. So that's all we do. We treat it like a diamond problem. It has to be in order, descending order, meaning the biggest exponent first, then the next biggest, and then the constant last. So if it's not in order, we'll have to rewrite it so that it is in order. Okay, let's go ahead and put this answer in and let's look at the next one to see if there's any difference for it. X plus six. X minus five. <clears throat> Got it. And they did the diamond problem also. Cool. Uh, I really like my shortcut of putting a dot and plus sign. So you're doing the exact same thing and it's less work. Let's look at the next one. Mm -hmm. Let's clear my work. All right. So do you remember how to do this? You should be able to do it in your head if you remember. We're looking at what two numbers multiply to be negative six, add to be five. If you need the diamond problem, that's fine. It has to be the setup of a binomial times binomial. So that's an X and an X. What two numbers multiply to be negative six, add to be positive five. That's uh, negative one and positive six. So I go ahead and just write these down. Sometimes you might make a mistake. So just verify. <clears throat> does negative one plus six make positive five? Yes, it does. Does negative one times six make negative six? Yes, it does. So factoring trinomials, what two numbers multiply to be the last number, add to be the middle number.